Hello and welcome to day two of Abia's Grand Tournament. Uh, we are left with eight players and yeah, I'm here with Sodl. Sodl, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, recharge ready to go after yesterday. Yesterday was a, a long but awesome day, hoping for uh, another of the same today. Maybe just a little bit uh, lighter on the long part, but I'm sure just as awesome. <laughs> Well, there will be seven matches today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four quarterfinals, of course, two semifinals, and one grand final. Just to, for the viewers that didn't see the day one, we are playing a 16 people invitational tournament with a single elimination bracket. Um, so, the, if you want to check the bracket, just type exclamation mark bracket and you get a link to abusegaming.com where you can see it really neatly. Um, packed on site, and so we had yesterday four matches: Gara versus Orange, Orange one, three one. Then we have Eco versus Tice, Eco one, three two. Firebat versus Hoi, Firebat one, three two. Cipher versus Roger, Cipher was winning that match. Then Ardu versus Powder, which Ardu took um, the win to himself. And then we have Tom versus Naria. Tom was the winner. Kaldi versus Fontap, well, Cardi advance, and Stansivka versus Ostkaka. And Stasivka was the last player to advance into the quarterfinals for today. So, um, the plan. The plan for today, we are starting, we are kicking off with the Orange versus Ecop. And we'll be um, proceeding to Firebird versus Cypher, RDU versus Tom, and Kaldi versus Stan Sivka. So awesome matches in front of, um, in front of us um, will be happening. Uh, but first, a little announcement. What is absgaming.com? You should all visit that site because it's an awesome calendar and go to place when it comes to esports. They are, um, they are covering 10 esports titles and also recently added Smash Bros. if you're finding games. Uh, so you can check all the schedules, results of the matches happening all over the world in one place. So that's very cool. Yeah. And. Um, so, what can you tell me about yesterday's matches between Orange and I mean the matches for Orange and Eco that were happening? Do you remember anything special in those matches? Oh, uh, you put me on the spot. Uh, it's been a <laughs> long, long old day yesterday. Okay, um, let me remind you: Gara versus Orange. That yeah. was the match. Match when we saw Priest Mirror match. That's very true, right? And it was a mm -hmm. Dragon Priest Mirror as well, if I remember. Yes. Right, yeah. So Dragon uh, Priest Mirrors. Uh, that's true. It was very back and forth mm -hmm. i mean the the draws from orange was just nuts he had everything every, every single game and the guy was kind of kind of unfortunate i would say in that match but yeah. still an exciting match that we had to um we we, we were uh we had to be held and i think if i remember it, rightly the echo versus tice matchup was mm -hmm. uh Tice was playing Troll Warrior, I believe, and Echo got the really, really intense draw with, uh, with like all his big threats in the Secret Paladin. Just got like Challenger into Boom into Tyrion and just like stole the game away that way. The um, uh, the highlight of the match between Echo and Tice was the last game when it was two two, and Echo got an insane start with double Shade of Naxxramas into yes. double Savage Rock. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, that was kind of crushing when mm -hmm. it comes to. Uh, you know, just stuff what can happen to you as a player when you have e exactly zero answers yeah. <laughs> to the minions on board. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, we got the, um, well, we got the lineup because, of course, players had to, uh, to play yesterday. So yep. it's the same. Orange just playing Druid Mage and Priest, and that's a Tempo Mage, as we remember from yesterday. I think everyone that brought Mage to this tournament is playing Tempo Mage, if I remember rightly. Oh no, there was the one Echo Mage, how could I forget? Yeah, 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 I didn't advance, right? Because that yep. was Powder, and Powder lost to... Who do, who he lost to? Was yeah, Powder gaming. lost to oh. RDU. Yes, Powder lost to RDU, that was a memorable um, game between... Mm -hmm. Patron, right? Patron and Echo Mage. Indeed. It, it, it went to fatigue. Yep. And last time, I think uh, when I was talking with RDU after the match, and he, he told me that he misplayed really hard. Like, he, he was playing really okay until the point when he had to make the final push with the damage. Right. And he, actually, he, he had to leave him at exactly one, and he left yes. him at two, and then, yeah, That's the game good. just like, lost from mm -hmm. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. he, he said that he could have waited one more turn just to, you know, deal more damage to be like more flexible with the fatigue damage right so he could have done exactly the same amount of damage mm -hmm. but the two fatigue would have ended up yeah. killing him yeah 
exactly or just with mortars because um there was no adva uh, like no nothing was advancing from um from uh, powder's side right or he could have just um played it differently when it comes to the execution of the damage mm -hmm. so he would actually put them on one okay, it was really a complicated sense. turn uh but he took the game uh the end the whole match eventually um and, uh, and right now ecop is with paladin warlock and druid if i recall correctly that's um demon lock hand lock right mm -hmm. and druid is kind of standard one yeah Paladin is a, of course, secret, if I recall correctly. Yep. Two players were playing something different from secret uh, Paladin. I was Tom riding the really... No, Roger. Roger was uh, running the really strange mid-range Paladin, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was with Direwolf Alpha, if I recall correctly. Yep. Direwolf Alpha is a piece of sergeants, lots of puff, buff cards. Uh, we didn't end up seeing any, like, extra token generation, but it seemed like a very, um, you know, a deck that was really built to take advantage of the 1-1s one as much as possible, but he just never really ended up getting that double state that he could really spiral with the with the Direwolves and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. um, from Orange's side, he's come with the Druid, uh, the Tempo Mage, as we've discussed, and then his Priest, as we've also discussed, is a Dragon Priest, so... He has three sort of very mid-rangey decks. You know, mid-range druid, tempo mage is a very mid-range focus kind of deck. Um, sometimes you get like the really blowout aggro start and you can play it incredibly aggressively, but for the most part, it's a fairly mid-rangey deck. And then dragon priest as well, also just full of mid-range minions trying to build a big board and gain pressure that way. So he's gone for a pretty consistent style through all of his three decks. They just have their own little flavors in how what their actual uh, win conditions are. Yeah, that's true. And he will also dug bargain for his Yeah. <laughs> That was another moment to remember uh, from yesterday. It's it killed a Doctor Boom and a Tyrion. Yep. In one turn. Yep. And buffed a mana worm as well, so the mana. Oh yeah. Push through, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just to add the salt to the injury, mm -hmm. or insult to the injury. Okay. I think salt's probably more appropriate. <laughs> okay, the players have permission to start, um, but almost one more thing: if you want to be, um, if you want to have let's say, five minutes of fame during the broadcast, you can use the hashtag ABSGT, which is an acronym for Grand Tournament, of course, in your tweets, which then can be included on the stream, like in the uh, on the lower part of the broadcast. So be sure to tweet something. And also by tweeting with that hashtag, you automatically enter a giveaway, uh, which includes Battle.net gift cards, which is really cool. And and how, how can Twitch chat find out more information on the giveaway, Lothar? That's a very good question, Sophie. <laughs> Thank you for asking the question. Because you can type exclamation mark giveaway. It actually works. As I was saying that a few times yesterday. Uh, so be sure to type that. It will have more information about the giveaway. And you also have, can have um, more of an information about ABSGT tournament if you just type exclamation mark ABSGT. And if you want to follow the button, uh, follow the button, follow the channel. Click the, ba the button with the little heart on Twitch because there will be more awesome tournaments on this channel happening soon. Not only hearts. Yep, all sorts of esports games. Basically, all the esports games that are being covered on the ABL site, there will be probably tournaments on this channel at some point. So if you have any sort of esports interest at all, which I'm sure you do, if you're watching Hearthstone, then following this channel mm -hmm. seems like a solid idea. Definitely. Um, we're going into the gameplay between Ecop and Orange. So. Mm. Game one. We're queuing up the Secret Paladin versus the Druid. Uh, a lot of people um, kind of torn on this matchup. Generally, Druid struggles against these really minion-heavy decks, but um, exactly because uh, there's so many one-health creatures in the in the Paladin deck, Swipe can end up being quite backbreaking, and we do see the Swipe coming into Eckholt's hands. So, how, how do you feel about this matchup overall? As you said, the Swipe is the MVP yeah. of this matchup because it's the only like comeback mechanism for Druid available mm -hmm. uh, against that kind of strategy. Because you, you, the Paladin is striving on many minions just to buff them with, an example, competitive spirit or just take advantage of the uh, Avenge secret. So having an opportunity to swipe the board literally uh, by the swipe, that's the only combat mechanism by, by the Druid. And, but in general, the Druid has a problem with buffed minions. So let's say something has more than 3 HP and it, it's not instantly killed by the wrath, by the hero power. You have to deal the damage by other means. And other means usually do, uh, usually are just minions. Right. And you're low on minions when you're playing Druid because you just play basically on curve a big minion. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I will say Echop has had a very good start this and um, the, sorry, this game. Any any sort of ramp, innovate or aspirant or wild growth, then into Keeper of the Grove is pretty much your dream start against an aggro mm -hmm. deck. Definitely. And you, you can see the Keeper of the Grove is very effective here. It gets sort of double value for the silence, but there's also a lot of merit of just uh, slamming the um, Pilot Shredder on curve. Yeah, I just wanted to say that you don't really necessarily care about the Divine Shield on a Haunted Creeper. Right. When you can just slam a Pilot Shredder, which always has value, mm -hmm. right? Because even if it dies to an Abusive Sergeant, you have Druid uh, of the Claw, you have a Swipe in the hand, so you don't necessarily worry about what will happen to the to the Pilot Shredder in the first place. And now, he's really weak to that 5-4 minion. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, if he was scared of Blessing of Kings, it probably worked out a little bit worse for him the other way. I mean, he would have retained the Silence in his hand, but... Um... Pad Empire would have got to use the uh, Blessing of Kings on a Divine Shield mm -hmm. you know, the full value out of it straight away and uh, retained it at the full size. So um, there's there's pros and cons against Blessing of Kings to playing those minions in either order, but this way he does just get to develop through to Druid of the Claw, which does kind of directly challenge this 5-4 already, but with the Cog Hammer equipped, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for uh, Beckoff to push through. Unfortunately, his hand does not have a great deal to follow up with right now. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I mean, the usual, um, what I like about playing other minions uh, than Keeper before you play Keeper is the fact that uh, you have to think about a build-in delay for your creatures mm -hmm. to react on to, to the board, right? So, mm -hmm. an example, if you play a Palter Shredder, a Sylvanas, a, um, oh, let's say, what else? Um, Druid of Claw is not a good example. I mean, the, the creatures that don't have a special ability that can be instantly um that can instantly make an impact on the board right usually want to follow uh, follow it up by those minions right so you play mm -hmm. an example a pilot shredder and then you follow it up by a droid of a claw in charge or taunt mode because they have instant um instant impact and in this case the pilot shredder will be just kept for a long time in the hand before we play it right mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense um Orange here with a pretty nice play. He goes ahead and wraps, I think that one of the secrets is Avenge, and then he just has the big game hunter for a ton of value. I think when you've just big game hunted a... Yeah, I think when you've just big game hunted an 8-4, I don't think you're too bothered about your big game hunter going down to one health at that point. Yeah, definitely not. It's a really cool play by Orange. Um, kind of all played the secrets. Mm -hmm. And this is also a really cool thing about the big game hunter in this matchup, because usually it doesn't have a lot of value. Probably none, unless it's Mysterious Challenger being played on turn six, which gets then buffed to a um, nine eight because of wow. Avenge, right? But when you can gain tempo before the turn, of, when the Mysterious will be happening, I will definitely do that. So really cool play by Orange here. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I didn't quite get there in time before it came down. This is gonna be a really poor or a subpar at least Mysterious Challenger because we saw he played one Noble Sacrifice last turn, the other one's in his hand played one Avenge last turn, he just drew the other one, so that denies mm -hmm, both mm -hmm. of those secrets being pulled in by the Challenger. You see yeah. that only two secrets get put into play, which I believe will be Competitive Spirit and uh, Redemption, most likely. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And Competitive Spirit, of course, right? Mm -hmm. um, as you said, the the value of the Mr. Challenger is lower, but at the same time, it's not even about this issue. It's the fact that you just lost two draws. That's a bigger, bigger issue, I think. That you couldn't really play any minions because you have uh, two secrets that are not exactly, uh, you know, worthy of a draw in this situation. You have a message under already on board. Right. So, yeah, that's the biggest problem, I think. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Now. So he does get his Noble Sacrifice now after a little bit of a taunt, which uh, I'm sure he, he feels greatly in need of facing down nine damage from a Druid. Um, but I believe Orange still has it, right? Pop the Noble Sack, double swipe to the face, and that is just going to be game. Yep. So, usually Orange... I mean, sorry. <laughs> usually Druid is struggling with this matchup, but seems like everything lined up for uh, for Orange. Every single answer wasn't there. It... Whoa! Uh, okay, that was close. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh wait, he only had 13, right? What am I talking about? He didn't All have right. Lethal, right? Yeah, no, I'm just being dumb. Cast is off to a good start, Lothar. I can't do maths already. <laughs> it's all good now. <laughs> Help. 
I need an adult to count for me, Lothar. Help. Don't worry, everyone makes mistakes. Alright. But Orange was winning this anyway. So, uh, f the first game goes to Orange, and I think that's a good start. You actually want an unfavorable matchup, mm -hmm. and Druid is capable of doing that always, mm -hmm. because of the ability to cheat on Mana Curve. Uh, by the way, what's happening to Orange? It looks like he's like almost behind bars, right? It does, a little bit, yeah. Like the jail warden has come in to assist him or something. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on on Orange's camera right now. I'm pretty sure you guys can't see it, but uh, nonetheless. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we, we talked about how important certain cards were in the in the Druid matchup when you are playing against an aggressive deck. Things like Swipe, things like a, a quick Keeper of the Grove to get yourself on the board and, and make a mm -hmm, tempo swing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Orange just had all of that. He had the he had the ramp to get the Keeper out quicker. He had the Keeper itself and he had both Swipes. Which just ended up being the backbreaking board clear at the end of the game and not in fact uh, lethal as I thought it was at first. But still, nonetheless, it pretty much was lethal, right? Clear the board, leave nine power on the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's. Uh, we have seen very similar situation yesterday with Wickham Hunter being played uh, on the Valence Chosen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, usually, you know, uh, on the Valence Chosen target, usually the Wickham Hunter doesn't have a target in versus dragon priest and versus uh secret paladin because the only thing that can be buffed to like more than six damage is actually the mysterious challenge or revenge which doesn't really happen every single time right so getting a just value from big game hunter is spec breaking mm -hmm. and yeah, now absolutely. we're jumping to the next game sorry to interrupt you uh it's between warlock and priest hmm yeah, and I remember now, uh, Orange has a couple of little twists on his Dragon Priest deck, one of the cards being the uh, Nexus Champion, Sarad. Um, we may have an issue here. We're aware that there are some oh, okay. sound issues on this stream. There are some sound so, issues, yeah. yeah. Okay, Okay. Uh, so we'll be just uh, fixing the uh, sound issues, because suppo supposedly I'm kind of sounding like Arnold Lothernegger. That's what the chat is saying. Wow. And, uh, Careful with your pronunciation, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll jump in a five minute break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I really want to know what you sound like.
Hi, please welcome back. <laughs> back from actually fixed the voice issues, uh, so it shouldn't supposedly like sound like this. Cut to the dropper. Anyway, um, guys, we'll be jumping into the game as soon as possible. Um, Orange is leading 1-0, and yeah, basically that's it. So, um, bear with us. Uh, we'll be starting this game as soon. By the way, that should be my default voice. I really love it. It was pretty fantastic. You did sound very Arnold Schwarzenegger like, I have to say. <laughs> I was waiting for the Arnie quotes to come out, but unfortunately, you didn't manage to weave any in on stream. So, yeah, too yeah. bad. I mean, I didn't actually like, you know, um, think about it too f fast enough. So mm -hmm. maybe next time, hopefully, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we are going into game two now, and we see Ecop has the the demon handlock up against uh, Orange's dragon priest. And pretty much since the beginning of Hearthstone, any uh, handlock variant is just immensely favored against any priest variant, um, mm -hmm. just because the amount of time you have to get value out of your minions, and just how much bigger the minions you're able to play are. You know, things like Twilight Drake is just an absolute nightmare for priest. Uh, but most yep. importantly, you can just afford to play Jaraxxus on any given turn of the game and never really feel threatened that you're going to die to the Priest and then just use the Jaraxxus value over time to win the game. So uh, Ecop has done very well here to, to queue into a favorable matchup to try and uh, bring this series back to 1-1. Definitely. Everything that you said is really, uh, really spot on. Um, we talked about it uh, yesterday a lot mm -hmm. because Priest has a similar, I mean Dragon Priest, has a very similar play style to a Druid, to a druid deck, mm -hmm. but he lacks the finishing touch. Which is usually the Savage Roar, even without the Force of Nature, or just, you know, the whole combo. And very true about the Jaraxxus, it's also very similar to a uh, Warlock versus Paladin matchup, mm -hmm. because Paladin usually lacks deep finishing burst also, so you can, you're not exactly, um, exactly worried about, you know, getting killed from 15. Absolutely. Uh, we do see the Priest has got off to a very, very strong start. Excellent curve through the early turns, which is what you need to be doing. Um, but Ecop here, because he's playing the Demon Handlock variation, what this lets you do is uh, spend cards on your early turns, like he's done here, and still have a nice on-curve play to play with the Void Caller. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a Demon in his hand to, to pop out of it, so he's still going to be preferably looking for a Twilight Drake or a Mountain Giant to play next turn, or just, you know, top deck a Malganis or something like that. So. Sure. Yeah, that's um, that's right. But we see that he has a big game hunter, and that oh wow, he drawed Doom Guard. That's mm. actually really amazing. And more importantly for for Ecop, that big game hunter is something that will be a dead weight in the hand. Yeah. For now, at least, unless Orange will make a mistake and will play a Valence Chosen on a minion big enough to actually trigger. Uh, the big game hunter and we hope this will not happen this game because that's one of the things that can even you know slide the favors uh, the favor in, uh, in the warlock side on the warlock side even more than it's like by default so let's hope that will not be the case yeah we saw that situation happen yesterday right where uh Valen's chosen was used on a blackwing corruptor i think just to give mm -hmm. uh, value out of a big game hunter that just never would have uh, got any value otherwise um, but, you know, pretty good draw for, um, for Orange last turn. He did pick up the Shadow of Death, which lets him deal with this Doomguard nice and efficiently, and he uh, maintains yep. his advantage on the board right now with uh, just a couple of small minions. Mm -hmm. Too bad that he had to use the Shadow of Death on a minion that's not exactly a giant. Right. Or a Morganis. Because that's not something you would, you, would, you would like to do. Yeah, I still think he's forced to there, right? Because otherwise he's yeah, just, just going to lose all initiative on the board and just, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Priest priest needs the board if it has any chance of winning this matchup whatsoever. Yeah, there was all, always a Vol'jin, which also really works well mm -hmm. with a conducting, uh, when we can pair it up with a minion or a down board, preferably a two attack minion like a Twilight Whelp, let's say. Right. Um, do you remember if he was playing Light Bomb in his list? No, nah, no idea. I think we didn't see it at all. Wow, the Sarada with no activation this turn. Hmm, mm. it's interesting. I mean, he can be fairly solid, uh, fairly confident that it will stick to the board because things like Siphon Soul have generally made their way out of handlock decks, uh, yeah. spe especially in the Demon Lock version, which is already looking for space to add uh, all the Demon Synergy cards. But you know, IMB Cowl is a pretty decent answer just to uh, deny some value, but. I guess Orange was fairly safe in the knowledge that if the Owl happens, he has a nice turn with Cabal Shadow Priest this turn anyway, if he wants to go down that route. 
I think it's not even about that. Uh, he played the Sarad before he drew Valence Chosen, but maybe he was kind of trying to bait it out as soon as possible. Right. Just to be sure that you can play Valence Chosen when you will draw it. Sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. Maybe just trying to to deep, maybe deeper than I should, but I think that's an actually legit, um, legit strategy here. Mm hmm. And we see Orange here kind of running into the first world priest problems here. He has like a massive board that is potentially a lot of pressure to the handlock. But right now, if he pushes, things like Molten Giant Shadow Flame can almost end the game if it comes down and sweep this board. But he takes the risk of um, activating the pressure, and we see Ecop with no giants in hand to, to counteract it. Mm -hmm. But do, there's the Jiraxus. You see a Jiraxus, though. So. Mm -hmm. If he can stabilize this board once, then uh, Jaraxxus is going to do what we talked about at the start of the matchup and just take over the game with value. Because we do see that is a pretty insane Jaraxxus hand, right? A Shadow Flame and yes. three Taunt Givers. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But the problem is um, now Orange is the beatdown. Yeah. And it's pretty, co he's, he is really convincing at it. <laughs> so, you know, you can just go and bash his head, um, bash, uh, bash the Warlock's head as soon as possible. I mean, when you see a turn when a Molten's, uh, when no Molten's Giants were played and then, um, you know, just a Healbot was slammed on board with any, any real follow-up, you can be sure you can just go nuts, right? Yep. Um, but the big game hunter Shadow Flame is going to tidy up most of this board. It's just going to leave a 4-1 left and you feel yeah. pretty confident asking a, a Priest player to do 7 damage, so... Um, it might be getting into the situation where Jaraxxus can come down relatively safely at some point, especially if he can get that Emperor down beforehand, get an 8-mana Jaraxxus, and that allows him to taunt something up on the same turn for some extra safety, or just summon a free 6-6. Six, six. So, wow, he's even going to coin tap and just ask the Priest Whoa. player to do 5. Um, so that, yeah, a lot of bravery from Ecol. That's actually possible, right? Valence chosen to call you know what? That was like a yeah, option to absolutely. die. That was really weird. I, I mean... I wasn't I wasn't really exactly looking forward to a Tafter. Mm. A free fall legendary, which is not a uh, Dark Bane. Too bad. Actually Dark Bane would be insane with the additional burst. Imagine this. Right. The Valence chosen on the Dark Bane. Mm -hmm. Additional free damage and you deal six damage from the minion. That would be backbreaking too. <laughs> wow. So he, we saw him, even even in this situation, we saw him contemplate uh, Jaraxxus. And I think that's just Ecop knowing how powerful that card is in this matchup. But asking for three damage from your opponent, you know, that's just a Blackwing Corruptor to face. Yes. Um, so, you know, that's probably too risky. I think the Pale Triss will just end up getting too much value as well. So um, there just really isn't a, too much of a nice turn here. He needs to try and, like, there's so many things he wants to do. He wants to play the 8-8. He wants to owl the pale Triss, He wants to heal up. He wants to taunt. And this is this is handlock uh, first world problems here of just like too many <laughs> too many good things to do in your hand that you don't have the mana to do them all. And that's why uh, Emperor coming into the deck during the, the BRM expansion is so important because it lets them do a lot more things in one turn. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he is going to go for the Jaraxxus, and we see it is going to pay off unless there's a top deck here from uh, from Orange. Well, not even a top deck. He can get a charger from the Palatris. That's very true. There are two chargers. There is Gromesh and there is um, Sky Captain Crag. Alakir as well, right? Oh, Alakir as well. Yeah. yeah were... And King Crush. And King Crush. So four drops have charged. Mm -hmm. I mean, you should probably just, yeah, use the heal first. Are there any buff legendaries? I don't think so, right? I don't think so. No. Yeah. And... Oh. Uh, which one is that? Uh, that's Acid Mo No, that... Yeah, that's that's the one that does one damage to every single minion at the end of the turn. Yes, at the end of the turn, and the that's kind of sad when you have an ADs with divine shield on board. Right, it, it doesn't do damage to face, right? This isn't lethal. No, no, no. This okay. is this is only to minions. Okay, cool. That's really unfortunate because he's going to lose his divine shield for free here as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of annoying, yeah. Um, this is a ton of pressure, and we've talked at length about how bad this matchup is, but um, Ecop's draw has just been pretty appalling. You know, no no big pressure early, no Moltens when he needed them. Um, yeah, and now a Molten appears. Now a Molten appears. Like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Why does this Molten Giant still cost six? I'm at one HP, goddammit. Blizzard, please. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he got no threats mm -hmm. on from 14-4 basically and 13-5, and Orange was just following it up with a really well, um, really well out walking curve. So it looks like Orange will win a an unfavorable, unfavorable matchup here. Yeah, unless Ecop does see a way out here, he can. The power of the Draxus form is that you can always put up a big minion, a big taunt minion very, very cheaply for two mana and just use a taunt giver as, as additional mana. So he may be able to just taunt and heal here and think he can survive one turn. Looks like that's what he is going for. Yeah, I believe this keeps him alive on the board, right? Mm hmm. But um, still, another Palatris drop will go. Yeah, and I think Bulgin is enough to end the game here, is it not? No, not quite. Because he still needs to dedicate two attacks to getting through the taunts. Mm -hmm. uh, so only one attack can go face here. So he's going to need a little bit of Paltris help if he wants to get lethal this turn. So here we go. Lots of options yet again. Any of those charges we talked about are still lethal. And it is a death wing. Ooh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good because basically he doesn't die to anything. Mm -hmm. He's just going to keep up the pressure here. And now, now he... His opponent has a 12-12 to worry about as well, so... That's the first time I see Palatris being three consecutive turns uh, on the board in a competitive game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even Malganis here isn't enough to keep him alive. And he's already used the Big Game Hunter as a Shadow Flame target earlier in the game, so that 12-12 is just an immense problem. And Priest is going to seal the game against Handlock. Orange going up 2-0 to zero wow. in this series. Yeah, that's really amazing, because he won two unfavorable matchups back-to-back. First, the Druid versus Paladin, and now Priest versus Handlock. Mm -hmm. The only left, only uh, only thing left is um, the Pat Tempo Mage, which has a really great matchup against Druid, mm -hmm. but it's also decent against Warlock and Paladin. Right. Yeah. If you can, if, it's basically all about um, the timing of when you draw your fireballs against Handlock, more or less. Like if you mm -hmm. if you get your fireballs like within one or two turns of you know exactly when you need it, you probably feel all right in that matchup. Um, but yeah, as you said, against the Druid, it's just uh, one of the best matchups in the game uh, in terms of... Uh, so one of the worst matchups for Druid specifically is the Tempo Mage. So Orange mm -hmm, has to feel mm -hmm. relatively comfortable in this series. Definitely. And also an important thing when you were saying about the Fireball, it's Fireballs in the in matchup against Handlock are basically like kill commands. Right. It's adds the same purpose. Mm -hmm. You just use them to finish off your opponent. Mm -hmm. You don't use them as board control. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just a finishing like light touch on your <laughs> light head. touch yeah. yeah and it's it's the same thing we talked about before whereas usually unless they've got like a really good emperor off which they usually don't have time to do against tempo mage mm -hmm. you're going to put them into a situation where you're threatening lethal and they only have one turn to choose to either taunt or heal and then the fireball is really crucial if they go the taunt route just to be able to kill them over the top true we see already a mirror entity in hand which is not Ooh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I just wanted to say that Wonder Entity yeah. is not bad to have against a Handlock because you can push your opponent into not playing a Giant when he wants to. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it can be really bad when you get our Ancient Watcher from the Emerald Entity. Be interesting to me whether um, Orange tries to use that Spell Slinger to overdraw the Handlock at some point. Because um, if, if there's no play this turn and he just sits and waits, then... Uh then the Spell Slinger is a potential overdraw, right? Because he'll go up to nine cards next turn. Mm, I don't think that's necessary. I mean, why would you play Mirror Entity on turn three from Warlock when he has on the coin? Mm -hmm. When you know he practically doesn't really want to play anything apart from a Twilight Drake? Yeah, so... I think knowing that you're playing against Demon Handlock, they do coin fours a bit more regularly because they have the extra Void Callers. Um, I think Orange might have been considering the Overdraw option there as well. And, you know, this turn he gets a ton of tempo with uh, the, the Hungry Dragon and the second Mirror Entity. Oh, wow, that, he will be punished for that. Uh, he will be really punished for that. Will he? Oh, with the Iron Beak Owl top deck? Or are you looking at something? Uh, even with the Sun Fury Protector. Oh, on the, just Sun Fury on the Argent Squire? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Mm hmm it's really annoying to get, like, uh, basically it's a Nyotron. When right. you have Sunfury Protector, the Ancient Watcher, and the Argent Square, basically uh, like it's an, a Nyotron on board. And when you have only one minion to hit through, uh, those minions, that's really, literally annoying. Right. 
Um, so with the second secret coming down this turn, if he knows it's Mirror Entity, then I think he can assume that the Iron Beak Owl is the best play, but he might be a little bit afraid of uh, Effigy here and giving his opponent another 4-drop on the board. I don't know if, how much he saw of Orange's list yesterday and uh, whether he... Did he play. use Effigy? I'm not sure, so I'm just trying to think. I don't think so. Oh, I think wow. it was only, um, only Mirror Entities. So he chose not to take out the Hungry Dragon there. He's just going for the more aggressive stance on the board because he could have still coined the Mortal Coil to take down the Hungry Dragon and just left the Owl on the board. That's interesting, approach because I think it was valid to actually attack into the Hungry Dragon. Mm -hmm. hmm. and Power Shield is uh, pretty reasonable with Flame Waker, right? It's like yeah. souped up Pyromancer Power Shield. But Snipe, that's actually super. Does it, uh, the ultimate kills every single card that Hunt, uh, that the mage will play, mm -hmm. right? Apart from Ronin and... Apart from the three legendaries. Ronin, Dr. Boom, and Antonidas. Yep. Uh, we tend not to see the mechanical yetis anymore. The, the, this deck's gone back to Shredders for the most part. So even against a piloted Shredder, Snipe represents a decent amount of value to at least get rid of mm -hmm. the first half of the Shredder. So. Snipe looking like it could be a potentially strong top deck here. Uh, sorry, a strong uh, spell slinger role. So, Let's see. Um, flame, do you want to play Flame Cannon here? Probably yes, because you want to spam as many spells as you can. Yeah, I think he's going to go for the clear here, just with the um, the Flame Cannon Ooh. damage. Well, that's kind of too late. Yeah. Um, so he can guarantee four more onto it with the Flame Cannon. All right, he's just going to go ahead and spend the Frostbolt on it as well, value having his board. Yeah. That kind of feels bad for Orge because as I said before, you want to keep those fireballs and frostballs as the finishing move against the handlock, just to like you know first push with your minions for the damage, and then when the when there's the wall of China, wall of thorns popping up, uh, then you want to just avoid those minions by playing the fireballs and frostballs directly to your opponent's hero. And in this situation, he already lost one frostbolt, so that's less damage available. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm. so Ekop probably going to go with a defensive play this turn. Something like Twilight Drake and the Sun Fury Protector looks reasonable. He was considering using the Mountain Giant there as well, but it, I think he's just he's valuing the fact that he doesn't really need an 8 attack minion right now because he's, mm -hmm. not, he's mm -hmm. not in a position where he can be aggressive and push face, so the 2 extra health on the Twilight Drake is actually more relevant since it trades almost as nicely on this board anyway. The only thing that it can't take down is the, the Flame Waker. Yeah, and oh, well, he's going overboard with the literally board. I mean, <laughs> he's overextending really heavily. And if, I think that's a valid option because you will probably not win with that kind against that kind of board if you will not spam every single minion you can. Mm -hmm. uh, but you will be definitely punished by a AOE effect, especially Shadow Flame. And as we see, there's a Shadow Flame in Ecop's hand already. Right. I think he's he's made a, a reasonable read, one that I don't blame him for, that he had a really attractive looking board for AoE last turn and he didn't see any. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he's just assumed that um, you know, Ekop has been unlucky and not drawn any of his AoE and he's just, because because he made the read, he pushed himself all in here and he's just going to get punished really, really hard for it here. Uh, Mountain Giant Coin Shadow Flame is definitely one viable option here. I think that's the only Shadow Flame target you can use for a clear. Yes. clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good target. You don't necessarily care about the um, giant being Shadow Flame. Oh wait, he will be, he will be Shadow Flaming. The shadow Flaming the Twilight. Yeah, the Twilight. Okay, that's fine. If the board's clear, you don't need to value the taunt too much. Um, it's mm -hmm. a matter. It's a matter of pushing four to face this turn precisely versus having a bigger minion preserve oh. on the board. So, well, look at that. Lava burst and a flame strike to for Eco. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, hard to say who got the better uh, deal out of that because both both of these players have basically picked up exactly what they want in the matchup. Um, mm -hmm. Flame Strike mm -hmm. is another board clear, but Lava Burst is basically just an auxiliary fireball now in Orange's deck. But I mean, with this hand, the double Moltens, the the additional taunt with the Sun Fury, the anti kill bot, and now the Flame Strike as well, I think uh, Ecop has to be feeling incredibly confident. Exactly. I don't think the Lava Burst is a good spell right now because you're lacking any kind of pressure on yeah. board so it um it's a board control um tool for you the lava burst and will most likely will be used under emperor mm -hmm. and that sucks indeed 
Um, he might decide that his only route to win, so he can attack face here for, to put him to 16, ping to 15. Yeah, there still aren't any top decks that really give him a hope of winning the game, so he probably does just have to play for the board here. And unfortunately, not working out. But he is looking like he's decided that this Lava Burst has to go face for him to have any chance of winning the game, which I don't blame him for at all. Uh, I think, you know, this game is a loss. It's just you kind of need to pick one world that you win that you win in and then, you know, um, try and play to that out. But he's just going to be dead this turn to a nice clean Hellfire for lethal. So, yep. Ecop, Ecop climbs his way back into the series. Uh, one game to two. And that's, um, I think he's deserved, like, um, to get that one game, even with a, not a really decent opener. But Orange has had a really bad opening hand as well like there was no there was no way uh he could have avoid getting bad minions from the mirror entity and that's a huge tempo loss which basically that was the opposite opposite thing what you want to do with your deck mm -hmm. you lost tempo instead of gaining it so yeah. that didn't look um well for uh for orange from the beginning and now we'll be jumping to the next game between mage and paladin so second, um, second try for Ecops Paladin to get back into the driver's seat to get the um, to get the draw. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, and Ecop is going to leave his druid to last, which is the strategy that most players tend to go with. They'll just um, when they're trying to make a reverse sweep against a deck, they will play their decks in order from best matchup to worst matchup and trying to leave the worst matchup to last. You know, several several reasons. Every player kind of has a slightly different reason for it, but you know, it can be things like just trying to build some momentum and start feeling good again. It can be about you know gaining knowledge about the the full list of cards that your opponent's playing, so you have the max chance when you get to the last matchup um, with the with the bad deck. Um, but yeah, it's generally the strategy everyone goes for, and uh, Ecop here being no different. Um, this matchup with the Tempo Mage against the Secret Paladin, it really hinges on getting uh, really strong Flame Waker turns off, I find. I uh, don't know how you feel about this. Hmm. I mean... I think it's fine. I, th I think it's okay. Like, um... The, uh, the Conkhammer value will be decreased now. Mm -hmm. And there's no draw... Oh, okay, never mind. Now the Mirror Entity will have... Again, little to none value. That's really not what I wanted to see. No, but, you know, still, a Divine Shielded 1-1 one, one isn't a terrible minion to have against this deck. It can start to fight for the board presence a little bit, but, yeah, absolutely not the value that you wanted to see from your Mirror Entity. What I want to see in this matchup is a Flame Waker with a lot of spells, usually with a coin, but yeah. he's missing that key card in this situation. Sosa's Apprentice both Sorcerer's Apprentice can really help a lot on tin 4 when you can regain a lot of tempo with free um free flame cannon, free uh free um unstable portal and a frost bolt, but at the same time you don't really have targets for that. Like the one one Argent Squires are basically immune to um to those spells. And um Blessing of Kings will give them value to trade for almost nothing. Almost no value given by that spell slinger. Yeah, this is, about, the divine shield. this is about the best usage you can ever get out of a Blessing of Kings, right? Placing mm -hmm, on a mm -hmm. Divine Shielded minion and just retaining the full value of the stats afterwards. Um, so, Orange finds himself in a scary position and he might just have to bank on the, the tempo swing turn with the Sorcerer's Apprentice here. He can get a free minion out Do of you the. Think so? He can get a free minion out of the Unstable Portal and he has a reasonable chance, a 50 50, of still taking down the 5 5 as well. Um, I think if that swing happens and you get another playable minion and you end up with the two three twos and another random minion versus a one one on the board, I think that might be you know your only hope of climbing back. Oh, oh, that helps. Cobble. Now that's really insane because now we have guaranteed board clear. Yep. And that's really insane. Casino mage at its finest, Lopa. Mm-hmm. He. <laughs> Look at the <Deacon> mage. <laughs> I mean, that's really insane because now the Cockhammer will have no value at, with the 5 5 being played less than. And that was really insane for Ecop. So now losing that advantage. Hmm, feels bad. This is a pretty nice looking uh, Noble Sacrifice here for Ecop, though. It, it definitely tanks one of these minions and takes it down with him. And it also bluffs things like uh, Repentance. Uh, sorry, Redemption, which is, yes. you know, a thing that you would definitely play just on turn five alongside a Piloted Shredder. So. Oh, look at that. Mind Vision. He will actually get information about 
Oh, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> got mysterious challenger. And just... <laughs> Imagine the Mysterious Challenger, yeah, and then a mirror entity from the Mysterious Challenger. Although, to be, like to be perfectly that. honest, isn't this just a lot better? Because yeah. I, th I think the Mysterious Challenger only pulls one mirror entity out of his deck, based on what we've seen from his build so far. Um, so I think the zero mana power of the wild that turn is actually the better option when you when you really break it down. The Mysterious Challenger would have been kind of wacky, but the power of the wild there. Casino Mage wow. absolutely going off the hook right now. That's really insane. A 4-5, I mean, basically a Yeti for free mana, which buffed all of, It's basically a Mokla's, Mokla's champion. Yeah. With a better body. Yeah. For free mana. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, that was just random on random on random, right? Absolute randomception. Spell Sling against a Mind Vision, which is then another random effect, which then had the mm -hmm. best outcome, got Power of the Wild. Just, yeah, absolutely ridiculous turn, but... It's it's given Orange a pretty reasonable chance in a game that he was falling pretty far behind in, but the Cog Hammer, pretty nice from Ecop here just to and stabilize this board a little bit. Yeah, Redemption World Value also, which is really important in this situation. That's one of the rare sites, uh, rare moments to behold when a turn 6 Doctor uh, Mysterious Challenger is not appearing on the board because he's not exactly um, giving you a comeback in this game. Right. Hmm. I, I have a question though, Lothar. Are we yep. going to see Dr. Boom hit face for 14 damage this game? Are we going to see Dr. Boom Blessed Champion happen? Mm, probably not. You will just use it right now for the damage, I think. Because mo yeah. most of the time, you will not have the mana to use the spell. And that's the problem with that card. Because even if you play Dr. Boom, uh, you will have... Pro you will have to probably face a problem with... Um, using your mana efficiently or just not having enough minions uh not have enough targets that can be actually buffed by the spells because yeah. you have like two attack pre-attack mm -hmm. and right now the the social apprentice with four attack was really looking promising yeah i definitely think so um especially after the totem golem dropped off the shredder um and the redemption happened i think you know that you're not going to be able to get boom to stick on the board for that buff to happen anyway so i like his decision there just to uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go with the um immediate just banking the damage that he could it was a pretty appealing target already just to bank the eight to the face and now a fireball draw at any time before he dies is going to be lethal yeah. but I... not even fireball because you can have the bombs uh... To to you know to be um, to go into um, Paladin's face. That's very just, true. Just finish it off with a f single Frostbolt. That's very true. He does know his opponent has the power of the wild in his hand though, so he has to keep that in mind. Uh, so how mm -hmm. much damage does he have this turn? Fourteen plus three is seven, so nineteen damage this turn. Not quite enough. Uh, and he will have to deal with this uh, seven one Doctor Boom, or at least deal with everything else, and trust that that is going to uh, tank the Noble Sacrifice. Mm-hmm. There are a few options to draw lethal next turn for orange. Um, basically two fireballs and an unstable portal into a charge minion. Uh, yeah, depending on how uh, Ecop chooses to trade this board down. If he does leave mm -hmm, the 7-1 mm -hmm. up, um, trusting that the Noble Sacrifice is just going to eat it, because, you know, Mage, Mage doesn't play weapons and things like that, so... Unstable portal into Blinktron, maybe? <laughs> 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 oh, hilarious. Now, if the bomb goes face, and it goes! Three Ooh. damage to the face! So, four damage being dealt. Ecop can't believe it right now. He knows he's dead to fireball. Um, fortunately for him, that is still not quite enough. Mm -hmm. No, that's enough. That's enough. Because. Uh, well, no, it? no, no, no. No, 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 one in five, this Boombot hits face and ends the game. Hmm. Well, you have to attack with it first, that's for sure. Yep. What to do? What to do? And we'll see in a second what's the result of this roll. I'm sure it's who. Oh! Oh! oh no! Ecop is is not having a good day. I'm sure of that. Oh, that is this. <laughs> Disgusting. Ecop <laughs> immediately pieces out. He is gone. PG Salt. Yeah. Let's spawn PG Salt in the chat for Ecop. Wow. That game was ridiculous. Uh, 
Uh, Spell Slinger into Mind Vision into Power of the Wild to buff his entire board. Blessed Champion to Bank Eight to the face. Double Boombot hitting face for Frostbolt Lethal. Like, come on. <laughs> come on, Tempo Mage. What are you doing? Well, the Dr. Boom won this game. That's for sure. It dealt six damage to the face with the only with the boom bots and that required a lot of RNG, favorable rng rolls for orange and um yeah that's basically it so orange will be advancing to the semi-finals uh, let me check the brackets if you want to see the brackets yourself type exclamation mark bracket for the link to abiosgaming.com and orange will be facing an, an opponent i mean the winner uh, from the game between Firebat and Cypher, which should be our next match according to the schedule. And yes, that's true. Next match will be Firebat versus Cypher. No, it looks like we have a quick change of plan here. The next game will actually be RDU versus Todd, oh. since we can't get hold of Firebat right now. So. Oh, of course. He's sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um... Okay, so RDU versus Tom will be the next match. Uh, so, with a slight change of plans, as he said. Uh, we'll be jumping into the commercial break in a few minutes, but remember... You can use the hashtag ABUSGT to tweet something about the tournament. First of all, you get a chance to appear on the stream to have five minutes of fame, of course. Internet fame, internet fame points that is gathered as, like, you know, it's the same as Reddit gold, very useful. And uh, also, you'll be automatically um, added to the giveaway, which features Battle.net gift cards. And that's really nice. So if you want also information about giveaways, just type exclamation mark giveaway. So now right now we'll be going into a five minute break and we'll be coming 